If Stoner were still around, he'd probably be pretty proud that Brownells made the BRN 180 upper. Took that concept since this upper's been out for a while and figured what else would be a modern continuation of it? Mat Matador Arms Sidewinder, an Ace Limited stock, somewhat classic lines, right? Uh, the ADM True Ambi Lower, because I think that's an evolution that should have been. And, of course, a modern suppressor. We're going to test this today, run five different loads through it like we always do. Two different shooters, myself and Miss Tia, each taking five shots of each load for a 10 shot group to give us a general overall feeling. We'll of course monitor barrel temperature and suppressor temperature to make sure things don't get too hot. We normally don't test things with the can on. We're doing it today because, well, for one, we both have a headache. And <laughs> two, um, this is our gun. So we wanted to test it the way we're gonna run it. If you wanna see raw accuracy testing of this thing, it's been done several times over the last couple years. We're kind of late to the game with getting one of these uppers and since it is so pleasant with the can on because of that piston system, we figured we'd test it with a can. If you're really curious, this is a YHM Turbo 30, sorry, Nitro 30. Um, been discontinued, already replaced, so kind of hard to replicate. But that's what ATF wait times do to you. You get a new can after it's already been discontinued. <laughs> Anyways, let's take a look at the, uh, the five loads we're gonna run. We've got targets out at 100. We're using the Brownells MPO 1 to 8 scope, which I think, is decent enough. I prefer to do groups with a bigger power, but in Colorado, I was shooting out to 600 with a one to eight power. So why not try 100 with a one to eight power? Our five loads today are also sort of advancements on the old 223-556 concept. So a modernization, if you will, of what Stoner was thinking about when he designed this thing in the first place. We've got the Jesse James, this is from Ammo Inc, a 55 grain. Uh, it's basically a V-Max, but it's black nickel plated and super sexy. Remington Ultimate Defense, I believe this is a 62 grain. Yes, 62 grain soft point, probably pretty nasty in flesh. Next to that, we've got Winchester's, uh, and this is also a 223. 64 grain with the extreme point. This is a very large Palmer tip thing. Ideal for maybe small to medium game. Nosler match, 77s, no, 69. It's an open tip hollow point. And then our somewhat more affordable, more common is the PMC X-Tech match. Also a 223 chambering, but a 77 grain open tip match bullet. We're going a little light and going a little heavy see how these things do. We'll show you our shot cadence and then our results. Results time. We started off with the 55 grain Jesse James. Pretty darn good. I'd say we beat most of what was expected out of this. I thought one and a half to two and a half MOA. And we did that with 10 shots. I gotta say though, it was Tia that did the tight shooting on this one. We stepped up to the Remington Ultra Defense or Ultimate Defense 62 grain. Not had the best results with the stuff in the past and that continued. Point of aim was here, come over about six inches. That's where everything hit. And it's about four and a half inches tall and about four and a half inches wide. Ultimate defense, uh, if you're using 12 gauge maybe. <laughs> Winchester deer season 64 grain, traditionally not the greatest round either, but didn't do too bad. This is kind of along the lines of what most people have been reporting with the BRM 180. The Nosler 69 grain, we had some good ones and a flyer. If we just look here, 
it's pretty tight. You can tell it's obviously very consistent, just maybe a little too heavy for this barrel. So what do we do? We of course step it up one weight more, or one more step to 77 grain, and we're seeing kind of the same thing. Wild flyer, wild flyer, about a two inch by one inch, still really not that bad after you count those flyers. We wanted to see then what would happen with going lighter than 55, since the 55 was the best. The only lightweight stuff we had is this, I believe it's 45 grain. Yes, 45 grain lead free, not intended for grouping at all. It's a trainer frangible round, but it's what we had. And that's this here. This stuff, don't worry about it. That was from zeroing this group here. So it certainly opened up again. Looking at the Jesse James 55 grain, let's say we beat what most people have posted with this gun. However, as you get heavier, well, let's just discount Remington. Um, as you get heavier, it starts to open up, even with fine stuff like the Nosler Match or the PMC X-Tac. So, the impressions. Started with just the upper, the BRM 180, which I thought was a pretty cool concept. You know, to have piston, 223, different receiver type, kind of a tribute to the AR-18, AR-180s. And I thought I'd go further than that and make it sort of like what would Stoner do modern-ish theme with the ADM lower, um, the folding, et cetera, et cetera. Tio, what are your thoughts on this build? I, I don't know. I, I was really excited to um, experience some, a platform that I was more familiar with and it looks really cool and then you get to the range and you start noticing little nuances that make you say what like the dust cover over the top of the ambi mac really or release um it kind of threw me for a loop but i was really excited about the right side charging handle like that rather than having the charging handle that you pull back so yeah and one of our viewers asked about how this dust cover over the adms ambi bolt release and you have to get your finger under the dust cover to get to it so it's kind of in the way kind of loses the coolness factor um obviously it's not meant for speed <laughs> <laughs> because you know just having to move that to to get to it um it, it it threw me a little bit i i actually stopped what i was doing and said what <laughs> and as far as performance on this um as you just saw we able to we were able to get better than what most of the internet has reported which is cool i think that's mostly her shooting um <laughs> the running with a suppressor on it uh, brownells themselves did a video talking about if you're using a 30 cal can which we are uh, that you might have to move it to the unsuppressed setting which we did which we did um it was not cycling uh, on the suppressed setting with the 30 cal end cap we swapped over to a 22 cal end cap hoping that would help still not quite and because we're running it on the unsuppressed setting recoil i think still is negligible very soft shooting oh yeah it, it shoots very pleasantly um but with it set like that though it does bring a lot more smoke back which you know coming out through the magazine uh feed area can present some problems when trying to see your your target yeah it, it's not as gassy as say as a regular gas operated 223 would be with a suppressor on it um, and because of the shape and the way the system is designed you're not getting it directly in your eyes like you would on a regular two, uh, ar but it is much gassier on the unsuppressed setting because there's more gas coming through yeah not a discomfort but something that was definitely obvious um, as we fired I think um, I'm probably gonna go back to the drawing board on this build. I think a different lower might be more appropriate. Yeah, the I wanted to go with that Ace stock. One, because it's super comfortable, doesn't grab my beard. Um, it grabs hair. <laughs> it grabbed Tia's <laughs> hair this time. But with the Matador folder on there, it ends up being really long. You end up with a, it, you know, the Matador folder adds another inch or so to length the pole. And so it can be a little tough to get behind the scope. I didn't notice it being tough and I actually enjoyed the the covering that they have on this um, it it negates it the the steel beating against your face um, I didn't notice it being too long in this setting 
and it mitigated the recoil better than I expected given that it's whatever this is made out of. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty stout, but uh, the whole recoil system, of course, on the BR-180 is, is captured in the upper, which is what allows us to use the Matador folder, which is solid. There's no oh. plug, no reciprocating mass coming into there. You can still fire folded like this. Um, it, uh, yeah, the build didn't quite come out perfect. The uh, Rise Armament Blitz Trigger is what I went with in this, which is super fast. Um, it has, I think they were kind of cheating the forced reset comment uh, con concept before forced reset became a thing. It kind of kicks you forward. Yeah, it, it definitely kicked me all the way past reset at least two times um, before that I asked questions about it. So that was interesting. So I think this lower might end up going into a different build. Might try maybe one of the Brownells uh, retro line BR-180 official lowers and just kind of keep with that. It's certainly an example of where a lot of great ideas sometimes don't work well together. But uh, heck, I'm not a gun designer. We just shoot stuff and talk about it. Um, I My takeaways though in the end are these BR-180 uppers seem to like the lighter loads, for sure. I wasn't sure what the twist rate was. Uh, couldn't see it marked on the barrel and I don't remember off the top of my head. We just don't have light loads at the moment. Um, but the fact that we beat what everybody else is saying about the accuracy tells me that there's probably a little more accuracy in these than people originally thought. It's just not gonna be a tack driver. Uh, and my takeaways are I, I enjoy the mostly traditional, you know, placement of your safety your um i can't think of what it's called today bolt catch the bolt catch um in that it's ambi it, it in the uh the charging handle i really like that it's just reach up and grab and and go very ak familiar very bolt yeah. action familiar um yeah well i think that wraps up um our range day with this isn't of course the only time we've been to the range with it but <laughs> we wanted to test uh test accuracy and see what's going on and as well as tweak um try that other gas setting with the suppressor i think it still makes a better suppressor host than a regular gas gun would i think maybe if we had a 223 can we might get smoother action out of it i don't know any of that stuff maybe i should read some of what he writes <laughs> <laughs> But uh, it was a, f a fun experiment. Um, this particular combination, probably not ideal. Like to see your suggestions in the comment section, um, either if you've set one of these up, how you did it, or what you think would make for a better build than this turned out to be. Thanks for watching.